Today I'm going to show you how to put pelican cases on as panniers. It's pretty easy and about half the price of regular panniers. And they come off in a second. Instructions don't mention this part, but don't worry, it's easy. You have to remove this reflector. It uses a T25 Torx bit. It's very simple. There are two fasteners. There's no nut on the back, there's just a clip. It's going to stay there. Once they're removed, you'll have one reflector with these clips in place and two fasteners. I always keep my hardware that I remove from a bike no matter what mod I'm doing. You never know, someone might be able to use it or you might be able to put the bike back in stock configuration if you decide to sell it. So as you can see in step one of the instructions, we're going to put these protective strips right here on the bar. They give you just one length of protective strip. You have to cut it. They already folded it in fourths. It's real easy to find the halves and the quarters. Anytime you're going to glue or stick something onto your motorcycle, make sure the motorcycle is clean. Just clean this tubing really well so the adhesive from the protective strip will stay for a long time. They don't give dimensions, they just kind of generally locate you to this area. Step two is to build your adapter plate. Now I'm gonna deviate here in a minute and I'll tell you why in a little while. These metal spools or for the aluminum bags that SW Motec sells. I forgot what they're called. I think they're called tracks. But we have a kit that we're going to install later that replaces these with a different type of a spool or what's known as a cis bag. It gives me quick disconnect capability. We're installing these spools though with a countersunk fastener. Make sure that your countersunk engages to the countersink in the uh, spool itself. I'm just going to loosely attach these for now because that's how it says to put it together. But again, we're going to take those off later. Next, we're installing this clip. As you can see, I'm working on the right side of the motorcycle. The right side, you can tell the frame has these extra tangs on it for reaching across this bent area that makes room for the exhaust pipe. You'll notice there's two of these, these clips and they're opposite of each other. This one, you can see it angles downward, but it's even easier than that. The holes are at a slight angle from each other. 
and the holes in the corresponding bracket are the same way. The instructions will tell you, and you should absolutely do so, use thread locker on these fasteners. Blue is best because blue is strong but removable. If you use the red thread locker, you're going to have to use heat to disengage it at any point in the future. I don't recommend using red unless you have a permanent installation. We are using a number four hex key. But this clip is going to be adjusted later. In fact, it may actually get removed. I'm not sure if it's used when I convert this to the sysbag system. So right now it's just snug. So the next step is to attach this bracket to the motorcycle. You can see on the back, there's a channel. It's going to go over these two protective strips. And on the top, on the right side of the bike, there are these two tangs, which are gonna reach over the top of this bar. And these two U-clips are going to meet underneath to attach them to the bar. Again, blue thread locker on your fasteners. This requires a little bit of force. Not a lot, but you have to push in gently on this bracket to allow this fastener to line up with the, uh, the U-shaped nut. If you don't own a set already, get some hex keys with a ball end. It makes life a lot easier when you're in a tight spot. It allows you to turn the Allen key about 10 degrees in any direction from, the, from being perpendicular to the fastener. So if you're in a tight spot, it really helps. So the same thing in this location. Again, a little bit of force. Doesn't take a lot. Just make sure it's lined up and be careful not to cross thread your fastener. Okay. So it's snug. I didn't tighten everything super tight yet. I've got a couple other projects, so I'll be having this coming off and on a couple of times. The last step is to install the spools on the bottom section. But in this case, there's no threaded insert on the back. And that's because this bar would be in the way. And it would be hard to assemble it. So in this case, we use a nut. All of this hardware comes in one bag. It's, there are only two types of fastener. This countersunk fastener for the spools in this button head fastener kind of your typical BMW built-in washer button head uh, for this clip in these two locations. Again, I'm not gonna tighten these down because I'm gonna turn around and replace them. But I did wanna show how it goes together in case you do buy the Trax cases. Other than the thread locker, I showed you everything. This is how this bracket gets attached to the bike. So next, I'm gonna install the little kit that allows me to adapt this bracket to the SIS cases. SIS cases is another type of product from SW Motec, and it's also a quick disconnect. So the SIS case uses a slightly different spool. It's slightly smaller in diameter, and it appears to be aluminum, anodized aluminum, versus what this appears to be stainless steel. And I hope that doesn't present a problem, but I don't think it will because the Pelican cases are much lighter than the aluminum Trax cases. Yeah, that is definitely stainless steel. All we're doing here is replacing the stainless steel spool with the black anodized aluminum spool.
The next step in the process is putting together the transition piece. This will attach to the back of the Pelican case. But before I do so, I need to attach this hardware. Each one of these brackets engages one of the spools that we installed earlier. There's a lot of holes in here that you really can't miss it. This one is made in what, in the engineering terms, we would call a poke yoke. You can't put it on backwards. Obviously, this side goes against the part, and the holes line up here. There's two close together holes and two farther apart holes. These three are identical. You don't have to, you don't have to figure out which one is which. There are four holes here. You can't miss it. You can't put it on upside down. The same here and the same up here. And if you notice, the engagement points are parallel to each other. So the nut is going to drop down in this well. You don't need thread locker for these because they're nylock nuts. Find the right hole, cover the well with your finger to keep the nut from sliding out, and you can tighten the nut enough to, to retain it. Repeat that. Here, here, and here. So today, we're going to attach this to the case. It's very easy. You're going to need a drill with a quarter inch drill bit. You're going to need some pliers or something. I put tape on here because I'm going to spray adhesive on these spools to temporarily hold them in place while I do some drilling. It's a deburr tool. You're going to need a screwdriver. You're going to need a wrench. In my case, 7 16 because I'm using quarter inch fasteners. These are quarter inch 20 stainless steel, inch and a half length. Uh, these happen to be screws. You could use bolts with a hex head if you prefer. Quite honestly, the tensile strength, the, the strength longitudinal to the fastener for this screw is close to 4,000 pounds. The shear strength to cut this fastener is close to 2,000 pounds. These four fasteners would withstand close to 16,000 pounds of force pulling the case away from the bike or close to 8,000 pounds of force trying to shear the case off of the bike. Trust me, this case is going to fail long before these fasteners do. You'll need eight quarter inch fender washers. You need quarter inch regular washers, eight of them. You're going to need the four spools. We didn't use these because these are for the Trax cases. So I'm going to use these as spacers. Uh, they were just very slightly undersized for the quarter inch fastener. So I did pass the drill bit through them. I have four additional fender washers that I took over to my bench grinder and I cut two flats into it, 90 degrees from each other. There's four of those. That's going to accommodate the ability to drill a hole close to this edge because if you can see it's very it's probably difficult to see but inside of here there's about a 10 inch by inch and a half depression molded into the case this washer is going to allow me to drill a hole close to the edge but still use a large washer to disperse the load first thing i'm going to do i'm going to spray this surface of this spool and i'm going to adhere it up against these little feet right here in the outer corner. I'm gonna push it to the outer corner as far as it can, can go, and I'm gonna adhere it to that point. And the, the adhesion is just to keep it in place while I drill the hole through it. Okay, the adhesive is now sticky enough where I can drill through this, this spacer into the case and it helps me locate the hole equally. With the deburr knife, bend it in the hole and it cleans up the edge perfectly. Same thing on the inside. So pay attention to the orientation of the case, just be in the top. This device, the latching device, also goes at the top. So 
the reason you can't put this directly against the case is because of all of these small fasteners. They're, they're interfering with these feet. And so it's not sitting flush against the case properly. If you try to move it around to a, there's a couple locations where you could compromise and get it fairly close, but then the foot is right in the middle of your hole. The spacer is going to prevent any of that interference. Keep in mind, one side of this spacer is countersunk. We're not going to use the countersunk, countersink, but we don't want to put the countersink against the case because we want as much of a load, the stress from this fastener pushing against this case as possible. So put the flat side of the spool against the case. Put a fender washer over the top. And the reason for that is the fasteners are going to pass through this large hole that already exists. Normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't really care for that. I would probably prefer to drill other holes that are quarter inch, but the way this lines up, the holes are very close to the edge. So it actually doesn't slide around once the fasteners are in place. So essentially these holes just work as a pass through and the edge of the hole, the inner edge, keeps it from moving around. The first thing we need to do is insert our fasteners through the holes. I'm going to show you one, but basically you just repeat it. So I put a regular washer on the screw. We're going to use this washer with the flats cut in it. I don't know if you can see that relief that's molded into the case, but these washers fit now into that relief area. So instead of sitting crooked or trying to compensate for that, they just sit flush against the bottom of the case. Repeat that four times. So now you can see the screws through the hole. The flats on the washer are against the edge of that relief that's molded into the case. Well, I lost a little short section of video showing how to put the nuts and washers on. I put some photos together. Notice the case on the left is thicker than the one on the right. That's to compensate for the exhaust and the way the BMW mounting bracket sticks out a little bit to the right. But it does make the bike basically symmetrical in weight and balance. Either pull this string or push this lever, it lifts right off. To put it on, align the spool, all four spools, lock it in place. stuck around this far you know how to put pelican cases on your bike. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thanks. Mm -hmm.